Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to Trail Creek in the Flathead National Forest, just west of the border of Glacier National Park. In the park, Grizzly bears have a wilderness preserve set aside for them to live as they always have, but the area west of Pole Bridge is even less populated by people, with fewer roads. It is lower in elevation and lush with thick, uninterrupted forests of pine, fir, and spruce trees mixed in with small stands of aspen trees. Willow bushes crowd the banks of creeks and streams along with tens of species of berry bushes. The geography around Camp Creek, which is just a few miles north of Pole Bridge, is rolling hills covered in dense forests. This area has a lot of deer, elk, and moose roaming the forests, and predators like cougars, wolves, coyotes, bobcats, and black bears hunt the shadows. The area grizzly bears have recently begun developing a hostile conflict with people visiting their territory. Along Trail Creek is a place where the stream submerges and travels a short distance underground. Where it re-emerges is called the Bubble Ups. Trail Creek disappears into porous soil and travels through underground channels until it is pushed to the surface by an underlying layer of non-porous rock, like granite. When the water emerges, it does so at such a rate that it bubbles like a spring, but is in fact Trail Creek. It is a popular place to visit just to observe the natural phenomenon. Remote cabins dot the vicinity, and one of them is owned by an elderly couple, whom we will call David and Denise. As of the compilation of this video, their actual names have not been released and their desires for privacy will be respected. Many of the cabins in this area are off-grid or may not have telephone service. There is a certain population along Trail Creek Road that likes it that way and has moved here for a more private and unsophisticated life. On October 1, 2023, David and Denise were walking their dog along the banks of Trail Creek. Near its origin, Trail Creek lies within a shallow but steep drop-off for much of its course. Thick brush grows along the banks and limits sight to just a few feet in most places. This area isn't exactly easy to get to, so visitors can frequently have the view to themselves and enjoy relative privacy. Around 3 p.m., Denise was near the road and presumed to be on her way back to their car, when a bear blurred from the brush from only a few feet away. The bear knocked her down and began to bite her. Given the couple resided in this area, they had come prepared with bear spray. Upon seeing the bear closing in on his wife, David was quick to react. He unholstered the bear spray that he was carrying and doused the bear as it began its attack on Denise. As the thick orange cloud billowed from the canister and enveloped the area surrounding the bear, the effects of the spray began to set in. The bear began to sneeze, cough, and shake its head, trying to get the irritant out of its mucosal membranes. Undoubtedly, its eyes, nasal cavities, and mouth burned sharply. This overwhelmingly offensive sensation makes bears, and just about any other animal reconsider the behavior that led up to the situation. In fact, it frequently makes them consider their location, and they change that very quickly. The bear backed away immediately, leaving Denise in agony from the wounds the bear inflicted in its very short attack as well as the bear spray. David looked around to make sure the bear stayed gone and quickly helped Denise back to her feet. She was bleeding and struggled to walk. Together they limped their way back to their car while continually checking over their shoulder. After helping Denise get into their car, David sped down the winding and bumpy backwoods road. He knew they needed to alert authorities and request medical help for Denise. Officials had to be alerted about the bear and its aggressive behavior, and Denise's injuries definitely needed medical attention. David drove them back to where they could pick up a cell signal, and once in range, dialed 911 to get the news of their confrontation with the bear out. He called in for medical help at their location and was told they should wait for a medical helicopter to arrive with paramedics. A medical response helicopter from the Advanced Life Support and Emergency Rescue Team was dispatched to their location and flew her to the Logan Health Medical Center in Kalispell. Her condition hasn't been released yet and the seriousness of her injuries is still being kept private. Following this attack, the area around Bubble Ups, including North Fork Road, has been closed until further notice. As you can see by the aerial picture, the closure covers somewhere around 100 square miles. The authorities do this to allow the bear to calm down following the run-in and to prevent more people from being injured by the bear. 
Additional people in the area may cause the bear to leave, and this would prevent bear researchers from trapping it and learning from it. The incident is still under investigation at the time of the recording of this video, and the bear remains at large, having not been found by researchers. On this channel, we have discussed many attacks in which dogs were present, and this episode is no exception. Reports of how dogs may exacerbate encounters with bears have been noted as well. After doing some research on this topic, I have some potentially valuable information for you. The data really culminates in the importance of a dog depending on its breed. Many dogs react to a bear according to their protective nature, making sure their human is aware of the bear, or even to protect them. There are several breeds that are specifically bred to handle confrontations with bears. The breed that kept coming up in my research is a dog called the Anatolian Shepherd. This breed is a large framed dog and rugged in its build and demeanor. Lauren Stoddard is a rancher in northwest Montana, near ground zero of grizzly bear activity and confrontations with people. She states that when properly trained, the dogs will actually train grizzlies that wander onto her ranch to look elsewhere for food. She reported that her eight-month-old Anatolian Shepherd once single-handedly turned a grizzly away from her goat herd. In incidents involving black bears between the years of 2010 through 2015, about 46% of dogs involved in altercations were injured. Their owners fared much worse, with 62% of people involved in such attacks being injured. Most of the dogs were off-leash when the confrontation happened, so researchers advise that people keep their dogs on non-retractable leashes as much as possible while in bear country. The report with more valuable details has been linked below for your review, so please check it out. When you adventure out this fall, remember to follow these guidelines. Most bear attacks occur when people approach their food or their cubs or get too close. Authorities recommend speaking gently to the bear while avoiding direct or prolonged eye contact. Slowly wave your arms and avoid high-pitched screams or rapid movements. Hiking in groups is much safer than being alone and looking big or standing in a higher position may help reduce the possibility of a bear attack. Don't turn your back on a bear and retreat slowly in a sideways manner while keeping an eye on the bear. They also note that climbing a tree may not keep you safe, as both grizzlies and black bears can also do so. If you are a hunter, their advice is as follows. Carry bear spray and be effective in using it. Watch for bear sign like scat or torn up deadfall trees or ant hills. When approaching creeks, be cautious as bears cannot hear much better than people can and the noise of the water may screen your approach. Hunt in groups and make noise to alert nearby bears. Be aware that animal calls like elk bugles can attract bears as well as cover scents. Quickly remove your meat and depart the area once you harvest your game animal. If you have to leave a portion of your game animal for later retrieval, make sure that you leave it in a place clearly visible upon your return. Use binoculars or other optical enhancement before you approach to scan for bears guarding the carcass. If the carcass has been disturbed, leave the area immediately and contact authorities for further assistance. After reviewing the details of this attack, I have a few questions for you. Do you think the bear that attacked Denise was a grizzly or a black bear? What contributing factors can you think of that led to the attack? If David hadn't used bear spray, would his wife have been more seriously injured or killed? I will be glad to read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.